Yo, what is the deal, everybody? What is the deal? Welcome to another Raider Nation Unlimited. I'm your man, Wasted Talent. Shout out to salutations to everybody in the chat. Yeah, man, I mean, listen, there's been a lot going on. There there, have been some things that I've been watching. I've been sitting back and kind of seeing, you know, what direction the Raiders are going to go in, man. You know, free agency has calmed down a bit. Uh, there's a lot of news and rumors. There's a, there's a lot going on, man. And I kind of wanted to let some of the news bubble up before I came and did my solo show. You know what I mean? But shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to my guy, Martin. Shout out to my brother, 12 Tries Worldwide. Raider Robert is in a place. Raider Jim. Martin from way, way across the pond. My brother. Always in here. My dog, Thor, the Raider Nation Drinking Club, yo. Yee -yee. My dog is in the place. Sean Johnson, Patrick B, Carl Ahearns, my dog Jason, man. Chris Four Raiders, get off my lawn. You already know. Phil Maddock, Frank Jarmilios. Oh, amazing. Blue, what up? What up? What up? What up, man? My day is going splendiferous, man. My guy, MVD Money. My day is going splendiferous today. You know, it's crazy, man, because. There's a lot of great things going on this weekend. Shout out to the family. Shout out to my wifey. Shout out to my guy, Fox Pack. Salute to the Go Wasted, the one only wasted talent. Working, getting that fire content. Yo, look. Let's get into it, y'all. Oh, uh, my guy, Cap, starting the day off right, man. Appreciate you, man. Gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships. Welcome to the wa Wasted Talent Army, whoever you may be. You know what I mean? But look, it's time to get into it. Lisa, good afternoon. Rudy the Vet Russo, what is the deal? So, all right, y'all, look. The NFL meetings are going on right now. They're down in Orlando, Florida. If there were ever going to be a trade up to number one or trade up to number two or three or four or five or wherever we might have to trade up to, the framework of that happening would most likely happen this weekend. Now, look, Antonio Pierce has spoke. Tom Telesco has spoke. Um, they're not really tipping their hand too heavy. I love the fact that Tommy Telesco doesn't really do a whole lot of talking, man. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes your downfall could come from what you say. Tom Telesco is, is, is to me, is playing possum. Tom Telesco is saying that, you know, you know, everybody from his history, he doesn't move and he doesn't seem like he's going to move up and reach and all this and that. But what we don't know is how they value who could possibly view some of these quarterbacks. The way that everyone else is viewing these quarterbacks and the way that the Raiders might view these quarterbacks could be totally different. Jaden Daniels could be quarterback number one and Michael Penix Jr. could be quarterback number two. You never know. They might, they might look at J.J. McCarthy as the number one. You never, ever know. So what I will tell all of you is, is that this owner's meeting is a, is a lot more than meets the eye for the Raiders, first and foremost. Now, Antonio Pierce spoke on this, y'all, and I'm going to read some of this. Antonio Pierce spoke about you know, with the 2024 draft set to kick off, there's been speculation and it has intensified that the Raiders might plunge and select a quarterback on the first night of the evening. The Raiders are on the 13th pick and Antonio Pierce said, that's a good number. <laughs> he said, putting them in relatively strong position to draft on the top quarterbacks of this draft class if they like. They also could choose to utilize the pick on other positions of need, but no matter what, that initial selection is used for. Pierce isn't shying away from the acknowledgement that the draft is likely the best spot to fill out the Las Vegas Raiders quarterback room. Now, and I quote, this is from Antonio Pierce. Well, you know, you can't have two quarterbacks on the, you can have two quarterbacks on the roster, right? So we know we have to add some, Pierce said. Sunday in an interview with NFL Network Steve Weiss from the annual leagues meeting. He said, the next wave is the draft, so we'll see. Now, after the 2023 season, which was, you know, defined by uncertainty, man, changes at the quarterback position is sorting out the needs 
is something that Pierce has been very vocal about. You know what I mean? And he was talking about Aiden O'Connell. We all have different feelings about an Aiden O'Connell. You know what I'm saying? And Pierce said that Aiden O'Connell has earned the right to compete for the starting job, even if the Raiders considered taking the quarterback. Now, guys, this is pretty much the same thing that I've said. It's the same thing that a lot of us said. This is really the spirit of what I wanted up and down the Raiders roster. I want competition. I want competition, yo. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you something. This is the best way to vet out the next 10 years of, of who's going to start for the Raiders. I, I'm done being an older guy watching us just anoint people things from year to year. I want every year for you to come into the Raiders and into and, and that locker room and earn it. That is what I want, man. That is what I want. There's been a lot of other things going on, but let me get to some of the people in the chat, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Taco says, Vince, Penix reminds me of Vince Evans. Damn, that's a very, very low comp, bro. TC Chaos, Vince Evans, bro? Come on, dog. Vince Evans is a backup, bro. My guy, Heart of Blaze, I'm going to Denver for a business trip, Bring all my Raiders gear to see how many people I can upset. Heart of Blaze, you are a brother of my own heart. I hope and I pray that you piss off as many people as possible in Denver. <laughs> my guy, Classic Man Q, who the fuck are you, fam? What is the deal, yo? <laughs> Look at you with your Raider PSD. He said the NFL huddled up to conspire against the Raiders. LOL. Nah, man. Look, bro. There's a lot more going on down there too, man. We're gonna get to the Brady thing. We we're gonna get to a lot of things today. But let me let me let me get to some of these chats, y'all. Frank Jarmilio, man. Appreciate you for joining the channel. Welcome to the Wasted Town Army. You've been here from the beginning. Yvette Niles, salute. What it is, yo. Wasted ain't show up for our show last night, but ah oh, man, get the f out of here, Graph. Yo, listen, don't 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 air no laundry in the chat. Get the f out of here for you get unceremoniously blocked. The f out of here, f and Graph. The f. <laughs> Wait a minute. So look, so yo, so listen, man. My guy Rudy's in the place. Graph throwing chat grenades. Yeah, man, what the F is wrong with this guy? About the F and block this guy. It's like, nah, but yo, listen. Guys, there's a lot going on, bro. And I'm going to be 100% real with you after I read this, man. If you go for a quarterback in the first, then we are starting, we're staring at a barrel of a gun and draft Penix. I would like to trade back. Penix isn't passing in the second bro look Penix might be more highly touted than a lot of you guys think now there's a lot of people that sit up here and they'll say yo wasted he's been injured and you guys have heard all of this but this guy has not been injured for two freaking years yo people say oh he's 24 years old as if that's supposed to mean something to me this is a relatively young guy bro Aiden O'Connell if I'm not mistaken is 26 years old bro I'm really looking to get the prime of this dude's career. That's what I'm looking for, bro. I'm looking to get the prime of his career. I'm looking to, to see what I can get out of him, his first contract. And then if he isn't the guy, then you, you move on, you get another guy. But for me, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm going to be 100% real with you. You have to go quarterback in the first round. You have to. If you look up and down his roster, you look at how the defensive line has come together and formed like Voltron. You saw them on Mass Crosby show. It was a beautiful sight to see those guys together, how, how united that defense is, right? You look at the secondary. The secondary is filled out pretty nicely. We might need another corner, but you can address that. The linebackers. Linebackers, probably one player away, right? The running back room, running back by committee, we know what's about to happen. Zamir White is a young stud. Madison is, is a guy who's been great in that backup role we can kind of move ahead and go and draft somebody in the middle of the round. But the thing that will propel the Raiders past a lot of teams and get us right in that playoff mix is us drafting a young stud quarterback 
and protecting him. And I think that at this point, man, the Raiders need to really do do, do quarterback a bust. Because if you really look at the ne- next year's draft, right, the Raiders will have to be so bad to draft a guy like a Shador Sanders or whomever's coming out next year that it, it's, it, it'll be even harder to move up next year. I think this is the year. And I think that a lot of the other needs in this draft, being that this is such a deep draft, this is the draft. I think this is the summit of the COVID year. There were a lot of people who got extra eligibility because they were able to sit out that COVID year. I think after this draft, that's not going to be the case, right? So this, you have some guys like the Penix Juniors of the world, like the Bo Nicks of the world, like the Jaden Daniels of the world, who have extra eligibility. Guys who missed two years of their college career that are a little bit longer than two. There's way more talent up and down this draft, man. And I'm telling you guys something. This draft, when you talk about offensive line, when you talk about the only place in this draft that is very, very light is linebacker. Linebacker is the place in this draft that, you know, you, you, you'd you have to act as early as possible. There's not a lot of great linebackers in this draft. But everywhere else, man, you can get value in the middle rounds. And there, if there's a run on quarterbacks early, you can't wait around. And you can't tell me, you know, a lot of people say, hey, man, Spencer Rattler, Spencer Rattler, Spencer Rattler. You can't sell to me Spencer Rattler when you have a chance to draft Michael Pettis Jr. You can't sell that to me. Because Spencer Rattler is a guy that, to me, is very, very talented. But I, I don't necessarily know that I trust him as much as I trust Michael Pettis Jr. Now, he might turn out and be a better pro. But he's not a guy that I trust as much as Michael Penix, man. I'm sorry. So when you get outside of the top three, Penix is the guy. To me. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm going to be honest with you. And I think it's to the point we need we need to bring in a, another quarterback. We need to bring somebody in. We need to have hope somewhere on this roster. We can't go into this, this year just having Aiden O'Connell. I'm sorry, man. My guy, Richard, gifted five Raider Nation Unlimited Wasted Talent memberships. More people to the Wasted Talent Army. Appreciate y'all, man. Yvette Niles, QB first round. This day is QB draft. We go for it now. And that's what I'm looking at. That is how I'm looking at it, man. That is how I'm looking at it. My guy, wasted two times in front of my very eyes. Saw so Penix here in Las Vegas in the um, PAC travel game. Then traveling to saw him, take it to my horns. He is legit. And, bro, th- this is what I'm talking about, bro. I don't understand what people are talking about, bro. I don't think people that are saying that you wouldn't go out and draft a guy that's as talented as this in the first round. I, it's crazy. To me, last year, it was him and Caleb Williams. Say, man, hey, Caleb Williams, man. And that's what I said. You cannot sell Rattler if you can draft Penix. You can't. You can't. And listen, I like I like Spencer Rattler, bro. I really do. I really do. I think Spencer Rattler can be a talented young quarterback. But the thing is, man, when I see some of the throws that Penix can make, to me, he's the most pro-ready guy that I've seen. Besides, and, 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 and I know I'm going to get killed for this. And I've said this on other lives, so I don't want to be redundant here. Michael Penix Jr. is the most pro-ready guy, even more than Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams is more physically talented, but as far as making pro throws, man, reading defenses, looking off coverage, Penix all day long, man. All day long. My brother, Quadre Sham Shadeen, man, clinch fist soldier, a lot of dragging of the feet has already cost us a little. Cool with Mitchell in the first, Penix in the second. I've done 10 mocks. He's always there. But see, Quadre Sam Shadeen, right? Those mock drafts, bro, you cannot, you cannot sit up here and go off of that. There are guys that I remember last year. Like, I'm going to give you an example. It's a guy that I like from Penn State. He was a center. Juice Scruggs. Juice Scruggs went way earlier than people thought. There were other drafts that said that Anthony Richardson would be available in the second last year. There were other drafts who had freaking Will Levis going way higher. That shit doesn't mean anything, bro. 
It doesn't mean a damn thing, bro. It really, really doesn't. Excuse me for the foul language early in the day. Football is a contact sport. Even if Penix has been clear and not hurt for two years at 13, it's still a reach. How is it a reach? The guy's had a solid, he's had a solid college career. He's put it on tape. He's played great. Why is it a reach? How, how, the people that are calling this a reach, how is he more of a reach to some of these guys who have proven nothing? Because of because I'm getting nicked? Bro, there are so many guys in this in this NFL, man, who were healthy as an ox before they came into the league. And then based off of the situation, they start getting dinged up in the National Football League. Now, let me tell you why Michael Penix Jr. for the Raiders makes sense. The Raiders are loaded at wide receiver. They have a, a budding young star at tight end. They have a Pro Bowl left tackle, even though he is a left-handed quarterback, so that would be on, on his sight side, his throwing side. You have a young budding guard in Dylan Parham who we're going to get the most out of because we're going to go to more of a zone blocking concept, right? And if you know what that means, zone blocking is more of a concept for faster linemen that can get down the field, right? It's not like the power concept. Now, most offensive coordinators and people around the league run both. But Luke Getze is going to run something that is kind of similar to what Kyle Shanahan does. So you kind of need those linemen that can get out there and get into space. Now, Trent Williams is a beast either which way. But if you see the way Trent Williams gets down the field, how great of an athlete he is, he might be the fucking best athlete on the 49ers. So he's a rare case being a really big guy who could get out there in the space and get downfield and block. But the zone concept is the one that is kind of taking over the National Football League at this point. So we're, 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 we're at an impasse here. So now we need a right guard. We need a right tackle. But I believe you can get that right tackle second round. You can get that, that right tackle third round. But that quarterback position, man, if you can get that right with the weapons that we have, you already have pretty good running backs offensively, Michael Penix Jr. will be in the best situation possible coming into the National Football League. Now, this is all under the guides that Jaden Daniels is off the table. Now, there are some that might say Jaden Daniels, Daniels is back in the play. The Washington Redskins have put it out there, if you guys have not heard yet, that the number two pick can be in play. But this is the thing you got to understand. It is going to cost you mightily. And when I look at Jaden Daniels and I look at Michael Penix Jr., they both have an equal amount of risk. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Let me go on here and read some of these chats, man. My guy, Raider Ryan, man, member for five months. Salute. Salute, Supreme Talent. Get the F off my lawn, bro. My guy, man. My dog, MJ Shaw, was the last Raiders Q... Who was the yeah was no the last Raiders QB to win a Super Bowl was not a lefty the the first Raiders QB to win a Super Bowl was a lefty um Jim Plunkett is a right-handed throwing quarterback but the greatest quarterback to ever suit up for the Raiders was a lefty Tyree Clay waste it I'm officially a member of your channel you were right we need to figure out how to get Penix before Denver Tyree Clay thank you this is the crazy thing about Denver I don't think we got to worry about Denver as much because Denver is a team that I think and for what I'm hearing, they're big on Bo Nix. Bo Nix is the guy who kind of lines up with the things that Sean Payton would like to do. The teams that we got to worry about are teams like the Giants. You got to worry about teams who have quarterbacks that are young, but not exactly that they're not exactly satisfied with them. You got to worry about teams like, you, you know, you, you, you got to worry about those teams that are in the middle of the pack. They might have Michael Penix Jr. viewed higher than the guy that they have starting for them. Teams like the Tennessee Titans. Th these are the teams that you got to worry about. Teams that are kind of like, you're like, eh, could they draft this guy? Yeah. You know, teams that you're not thinking about. Teams like the Rams may be moving up. You haven't heard anything about the Rams doing that, but the Rams, yo, yeah, they have Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford's getting a little long in the tooth. You have to consider everything. You have to. Chicago's out of the box. Green Bay's out of the box. You ain't got to worry about them. Cross them out. The New York Jets, they're not going to draft, you know, a quarterback. 
in the first round. I can't see that happening. You know what I'm saying? I can see them drafting a quarterback because of Aaron Rodgers and the fact that Zach Wilson's not going to be there, but I can't see that happening. The Browns can't afford to draft a quarterback. They they have to live with the mistake they made in signing Deshaun Watson. Texans are cool. But you have a team like the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, I don't know if the Dallas Cowboys are completely sold on Dak Prescott. This would be the kind of draft that you would go up and 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 Pearl Harbor the Raiders and go get a guy like a Michael Penix Jr. and sit him down, depending on how they feel about Trey Lance. Them bringing in Trey Lance shows you everything you need to know about how they feel about Dak Prescott. The, the New York Giants, Daniel Jones, they, they the Giants don't look like they're super sold on 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 his men. What if somebody moves up ahead of us with the Redskins with a higher pick than us, gets the second pick, takes somebody, and then the Redskins are, are, are sold on Penix, and they're still ahead of us. The Redskins need a quarterback. What if the Redskins trade down? What if the Patriots trade down and value Penix Jr.? So this is the thing that I'm trying to say to you guys. The draft is a fluid situation. So when you have your hands around the situation, you have to do everything you can to stabilize the situation. Wasted. What about Penix's ability to create outside of the pocket? Does he remind you of Bridgewater, but with a deep ball? No. He has a strong arm than Teddy Bridgewater. Um, he throws the ball deeper than Teddy Bridgewater. He's more athletic than Teddy Bridgewater. Michael Penix Jr., before his knee injury, was looked at as a um a dual threat quarterback. He is a guy who has been athletic, has some injuries, and had to figure it out. And that is the thing that I love about him. But the the, the other thing that I see with Michael Penix Jr. is, and this is where I think he has Teddy. Teddy Bridgewater beat is the arm talent. His arm talent is off the charts, man. Off the charts, man. Shout out to everybody in the places to be. Let me get back to some of these, man. My guy, Quadre Shamshadeen. And everywhere Penis is going, he has changed the building. Yes, he is a studier of film. Love Michael Penis Jr., bro. And I don't want to turn this into the Penix Jr. draft. I mean, a show. But look. I want to talk about this, and I want to talk about this. And the reason why I decided to go on today is because on, on, on my Twitter feed, a lot of y'all are watching on Twitter. I put a video up of Michael Penny Jr., and I posed a question, had a poll on Instagram. A lot of y'all responded to it. I thought it was time to bring this live here. So a lot of the people who are arguing with me and you watching me from Twitter, make sure y'all pull up. Make sure y'all subscribe so you can participate in this. My guy, T. Severe, in a place. The narrative around Michael Penix Jr. changed after the Michigan game. After he beat Texas, he was universally considered a top 10 pick. He's the best passer in the draft and a pro-ready processor. And that's the way I'm seeing it. And I'm not going to let one game change my view, especially when you have a team like Washington who don't have a whole lot of guys who are going to the National Football League. And Michigan have guys on the bench who are going to be in the NFL. Michigan was a, was a, was a juggernaut this year. A juggernaut. Ba just based off the importance of a QP position, the arm talent pinning has no way taking him at 13 is a reach. Raider Alex, man, appreciate that. And that's how I view it, too. When you have a guy with that kind of arm talent, you cannot. You, you Listen, man. The most important position in this league is quarterback. Now, there are some people who will say, man, you know, the Raiders are trying to go the route of the Ravens in the 2000s. You got Marvin Lewis on the squad. But let me tell you something, man. When you look at the way the Ravens were built, that was a time in the past. That was a time when the defense can affect the game in more of a, um, a direct way than you can now in the National Football League. You know, Ray Lewis and the Ra the Ravens of the early 2000s, Ray Lewis, Peter Bulware, you know what I'm saying? Um, Jamie Sharper, all of those guys, Sam Adams, all, all of them guys, right? Those guys, R Rod Woodson, <laughs> Dwayne Starks, that defense, the uh, and then going up on the second Ravens run when they drafted Ed Reed. They used to be able to hit the quarterback. They used to be able to knock receivers out of the game without getting ejected. Tom Brady talked at nauseum about how he had little receivers. He wasn't going to throw the ball in a situation 
will Ray or Ed Reed would knock Deion Branch out of the game or David Givens out of the game because he knew if he did that, he would they would get knocked out of the game. See, the Ravens defense could put some pain on you. They can make it to where your starting quarterback don't finish that game. In today's league, it is great to have a great defense. And that's what I hope the Raiders have. I hope we are defensive first football team. But it's a different style of defense. It is get people off the field, but not knock people out of the game. Back in the days, stout defenses used to be able to knock people out of the effing game. Do you think MJP is going to be in a second? No, I don't. I really, 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 really don't, man. Big Lil Bosco. Penix was cleared by the NFL's medical staff. And AP said, AOC is our starter and will compete to keep it. Folk who dispute that is feeling over facts was a person. That's a fact, Big Lil Bosco, man. My God, Cowtown, wasted. What's the difference between an asset and a liability? If you're a business owner or a GM, you're thinking with a business mind. Would you consider Penix an asset or a liability? I consider him a 100% asset. And, and, and when you play a contact sport, everybody could possibly become a liability, bro. You could be healthy as an ox and have a catastrophic injury. Everybody's one play from being a liability, brother. And I know you're thinking, well, he's been injured before, but he ain't the first and he ain't the last. But there's a lot of guys in this league who have had injuries in, in college and come back and had long careers. There were a lot of guys who have had injuries and had to transfer and have long careers. Now, this is the thing about Michael Penix Jr. You call him a liability. Jaden Daniels could be a liability. Have you guys ever watched the film of the way Jaden Daniels puts himself in a harm's way when he runs? Have, have, have you guys really looked? Have you seen the way that, that, that Jaden Daniels runs the football and doesn't slide? I mean, he's a tall kid and very athletic, and he's amazing, right? But some of them hits I've seen Jaden Daniels take, I don't want to see him take too many of them hits in the NFL. And it's more so about getting that guy behind center, getting him around all his talent, and having the ability to, to deliver the ball to the best player on offense, Devontae Adams, and making Devontae happy, making Devontae be the 1,600-yard, 18 to 16 to 15 touchdown guy he can be, getting Jacoby Myers that eight, eight to 900 yards, 11 touchdowns, you know, getting the best out of Michael Mayer, throwing the football over the middle with touch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with this defense. See, so my thing is, if he could be the kind of quarterback that can will you to 25, 26 points, I mean, God damn it. How can that be a problem? How can that be a problem? I don't, I don't get it, man. I, I really don't get it, yo. My guy, James Moore. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, we hit 2 million views, too, this week, y'all. Shout out to y'all. Yvette, oh, you had to do that. Appreciate you for gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships to the chat, man. Appreciate you, Yvette. So how is everyone going to feel if we draft Penix and AOC beats him out and we passed on some great talent that would start like um, Fuaga? I'm not going to feel anyway because just because he beats him out in the beginning of the season doesn't mean that you're not going to bring him in in the middle of the season and he can possibly start in the middle of the season. And just because we pass up Fuaga doesn't mean you can't find a lineman later in the draft that can play just as well as him, bro. Like, I think a lot of the times, man, people get mixed up with draft positioning. It is all about finding the right player to fit into what the Raiders are trying to do. That's what it's about. That is what it's about. There are guys in this league who are Hall of Famers, who were drafted in the fourth and the fifth round. Don't get, hung, hang, don't get hung up on where someone gets drafted. Get hung up on how effective they are. My guy, Jack Burton. Penny's looking like Warren Moon 2.0. And Jack, you know what it is, man. 
Shout out to my guy, Jack Burton, my Jersey brethren, man. The Raiders could have gotten Daniels, but he won the Heisman. And that's a fact. You got you to gotta pay that, 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 that Heisman tax, y'all. My guy, John Rodriguez. Wait a second. I saw a podcast that they have us moving back to 24 with the cow chips and getting more picks and getting Penix at 24. Maybe. If that happens, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. But, bro, is it likely? I don't think so. The Dallas Cowboys got some holes to fill, too, man. Wasted dropping knowledge on us. I'm here for it. My guy, space is in a place, man. Elite Med, this is a deep draft of O-linemen. Get your QB first. And this is what I've been saying. This is what I've been saying. Elite, you can get a guy that could be a perennial starter in the third or the fourth round in this draft. This draft is super deep. Super deep, yo. Cal Town. Jaden Daniels is a liability when he runs, but far less than one as per the facts. With the injury history, Penix is not an asset. Tom knows that. How the Cal Town, bro? How do you know that he's not an asset? Ba what are you basing this off of, bro? You you act like this is this is baseball or basketball. Even in those sports, people get injured and they they return from it. Just like in baseball, you have guys who have Tommy John surgery, and they come back and win the Cy Young every freaking year. Like, dude, just because somebody got injured when they were a young man, and he's still a young man, he's only 24 years old, right? That doesn't mean that now he's just this injury-prone bum who's going to get hurt all the time. I'd rather it happen now. I'd rather it happen in college. We has a chance to sit down with no pressure, and heal and come in here and now his body's matured his skill set is matured and he can be the best version of the quarterback that i believe he can be my dog grab people calling players bust before they play it down is hilarious to me bro it is to me too it's nasty work in here yo it's nasty work man you're you're calling somebody a bust because you think because they had an injury Years ago, come back, strung together a historic career at his college, played well against huge programs, played not so great against Michigan. Now, all of a sudden, he's a liability and a bust. The F is going on here, man. And a lot of people say, look, why not help the O-line and two tight end sets and all of this, 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 this nice this nice, you know, oh, let's 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 go out and get all these linemen. What the what the fuck does it matter if you pass on CJ Stroud again this year? The fuck does it matter, bro? If you got mid and mid at quarterback and you have a chance to have a guy who has superstar potential at center, I would much rather address the lineman issue than have to keep addressing the quarterback issue next year. Locating a quarterback is worth his weight in gold for Antonio Pierce to keep his job. The reason why people don't keep their jobs in the National Football League is because they don't address the quarterback position fast enough. And if Antonio Pierce doesn't figure that out, you might not have to worry about, you know, straight out of Compton, the new Raider way, all of this stuff. You might not have to worry about that because he won't be here. That is the most important thing, bro. It is like paying your mortgage. I've said this a million times. It is like paying your mortgage. It is the first thing that you do. Get a quarterback that you know can play at an elite level. Salute to my bro, Graf, man. My final mock is set in stone. Can't wait till next month. I can't wait neither, man. We have a good time out there too, bro. We have a good time, yo. And guys, this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a real in-depth mock. And what I'm also going to do, after I do my mock, I'm going to do shorts, breaking out every player that I select in my mock draft. And we're going to keep doing that up to the draft, man. Roy, Penix tours right ACL against Penn State. Penix retours ACL against Maryland. Penix missed the final four games, clavicle structure, shoulder AC joint separation. OK, and he's fine now. Now, see, there's a difference between being injured and being hurt.
the guy has a clean bill of health. He got hit. Is what it is. Is what it is. Steve, Michigan versus Washington. All 22 shows who really lost. Any QB that gets contained will struggle. Max Crosby versus home is case in points. Fantua versus Rose Guard made the DEs look like Max. Congrats on the two mil. Thank you, Steve. Steve Orlinia, man. My guy Ty Davis. Salute, wasted. Finally watching you at home to get this membership. Get off my lawn. My brother Ty Davis, man. It's my guy in real life, man. He pulled up on your brother. I'm standing next to the Raiders Stadium in Vegas with my two boys. You would happen to pop on, wasted. This is perfect right now. Raider Nation for light. Raiders, my dog, man. Martinez in a place, man. Tool was hurt a lot in college. Now look at him. The only difference is Penix is bigger, has a bigger arm. He's played in cold weather. So that won't hurt Penix. Classic man Q, always dropping a haymaker, man. My guy, John Rodriguez, wasted. I would be happy as hell to move down in the order and get more picks in this year's draft and next year's draft. I would too, bro. I would too, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that's happening. Cowtown, listen, let me tell you something, bro. I'm never in my feelings. You know what I'm saying? W what I can give you is I can give you information, not affirmation, brother. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not ignoring facts, bro. Like, I think that what you guys think, your opinion is a fact. It's not a fact, bro. We have a difference of opinion here. That injury is not an ignoring to me. Yeah, I know he's been hurt. But the fact remains is that for two years, he's been healthy. So to me, it all depends on how you look at it, brother. But what I will tell you is, Caltown, I don't agree. I don't give a F what you say. I think they need to take him. And then, Roy, you say injured. Is it difference between being injured and hurt? Has he missed time in the last two years? No, every quarterback and every player who plays football gets dinged up. What the F are y'all talking about? F out of here. I live in Vancouver, two-hour drive from Seattle. Drove down to Husky Stadium three times last year. Michael Penix, arm, talent, accuracy. His reading defense is IQ. Kid's going to be great. I agree with you. Now, look. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to read some more of these. We're going to get off the Penix caveat. Some other stuff we got going on. Waste it. You taking this offer? The Queefs give the Raiders three picks this year to move up from 32 in the future pick. And you taking it, draft penis. You know, I, I'd have to see it. I have to see the, the I'd have to see the trade in front of me, man. That's a lot, the, the process. Because you're dealing with dealing with the, the Chiefs. You know what I'm saying? You're dealing with the Chiefs. Watch Hondo a couple days ago. He said 60% of the first round QBs are not successful. Yo, bro, that's a fact. If you've been watching football a long time, bro. It, it's it's see the, the thing about Michael Penix or wh whomever the Raiders choose to draft it might not be Penix. I need it to be a guy that they believe in, that they believe that they can develop and get it out the way and get behind the kid. See, a, a lot of a quarterback succeeding with your organization is how the organization supports said kid, right? Now you can look at the Jamarcus Russell situation, right? Years ago. Everybody in the organization wasn't 100% on board with Jamar. Now, Jamarcus Russell didn't do anything to help either, right? But there were certain problems, you know, him getting in the camp late, right? Him being overweight, right? Lane Kiffin not wanting Jamarcus Russell at all and acting like a child because Al didn't draft Calvin Johnson. And Lane Kiffin was right, right? But Lane Kiffin went about, he wasn't a professional when he came to developing Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell not having a quarterback coach. Jamarcus Russell holding out. Before. So there, it started out in a negative connotation, and it ended up negative. And the thing that is important in developing a young quarterback is having everyone be behind him. From the owner down to the GM and the president, down to the coach, down to all the coordinators and the players on the roster. Everybody getting behind this kid, getting him the reps he needs getting him everything he needs to support him to be great. 
that is that is what is very 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 important that's what's the most important thing so let's just hope whether it's Penix, even if it's Bo Nix, that the organization believes in the kid and gives him a, a platform to be successful. Blaze, y'all didn't see Jaden get rocked in the LSU versus FSU game. That's a liability. Yes, it is, bro. That's yes, it is. I still build up the O line, go with ALC and Minshew as QB two. Listen, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Aiden O'Connell has to do a fucking lot to win this job. And he has to have a credible challenger. Now, Garner Benshu is a great, credible challenger, right? But Aiden O'Connell has to show me a, a few things for me to be comfortable with him being a starter. One, he has to show me that he can move a little better in a pocket, right? He Aiden O'Connell has to show me a lot for me to get behind that, for real. He has to show me a lot. My dog, your Raider Nation, we got over 687 in a row. Oh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> over two or four likes. Pay that ball tab and subscribe to the show. Thanks, Top. Appreciate you, bro, for being in here, man. Cats, I disagree with you, the man. Thank Yo, Cats, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, bro. Wasted. If anything, we should trade our fit. Nah, Leaky. Our fans are the best in the world. Don't talk like that, bro. My dog, Grab. Tom Brady tore ACL. Grant tore an ACL. Adrian Peterson tore an ACL. JC, JJ Watt tore an ACL. All Hall of Famers. Th Kraft, thank you, man. God damn it. Dropping haymakers in here, man. Sean Huggins. We're in a tough spot to me. We got to go out for Jaden Daniels. Fuck them picks. Without a franchise QB, you ain't winning shit in the NFL nowadays. We can't guess right with these QBs and picks and drop. Now, see, this is the thing, bro. Jaden, it's a lot that needs to happen for Jaden Daniels to 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 fall to us. If people view Jaden Daniels as favorably as we do, you you might not get a chance. The only chance you have is to move up to number two with the Washington Redskins. But yo, it is going to cost you mightily. Drafting Jaden Daniels might paralyze this organization moving up to get him if he's not as good as we think. Even if he's not a complete bust and he's just mid. Can you imagine moving up to get him and he's mid, right? Let, let's 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 throw a name out there, right? Let's throw a name out there. Say, for instance, Jaden Daniels is as good as two attack via low. But you gave up three first round picks, two first rounders, all this shit to get two attack via low. Or to get a guy that's the, at the level of Dak Prescott, you moved up and to get that guy. How would you feel about that? And then don't let it be a situation where he's that kind of a guy and he gets dinged up and hurt. See, to me, the best, the 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 road to the to the to success is staying pat or like dollar cost average to where you don't have to move up too far, you don't have to give up too much, and you don't have to dig into to too much of this year's draft. To get to where you want to be to grab to draft a quarterback, bro. If it's not Penix, draft all defense, a running back early, a true right tackle, and run the motherfucking ball crazy. And I would love to see that. I would love to see that, man. My guy, John John Rodriguez, speak the truth on AOC. He better show some seriously escapability in pocket. Way better than last year. Get rid of him. After his rookie contract is up. Now, look, this is the thing with Aiden O'Connell. I'm not totally out on Aiden O'Connell. The, 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 the thing with Aiden is, is this doesn't like, and see, this is the thing when we talk about escapability from quarterbacks. I don't need Aiden O'Connell to be Michael Vick, bro. I don't need that. But what I need for Aiden O'Connell to be is aware. I need him to be a guy who can move the pocket. I need him to be a guy who can climb the pocket and get rid of the ball. That's what I need. I need to see that. I need to see that. And just at this point, when I see Aiden O'Connell in the NFL, I see him in college, and I see Michael Penix Jr., Michael Penix Jr. is a superior player, man. Seriously. He's a superior player, bro. But it is what it is. Let's get off of this Michael Penix thing. Now, guys, my guy Solomon Mitchell, let me read this. Love your commentary on the whole organization getting behind the drafted QB from the owner. 
to the effing guy selling the peppies for eleven dollars a cup. They all have to give him what he needs to succeed, man. And I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, that's the most important thing. Now, guys, when we look at the draft, right, and we look at what's going on with, with the Raiders. Now, you saw on Max Crosby's um, podcast, man, he had a whole defensive line in there, bro. And it, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to see the camaraderie in the building, right? The thing that I'm concerned about with all of the, the, the hype we got around the Raiders, and this is my Raider PSD, PTSD kicking in. There have been years that it looked like we were building towards something, and then we took a step, four steps back. And I'm praying that that's not the case. And I don't want to put that in the atmosphere, but that is one of the reasons why I am very, very, very concerned. Very concerned about the Raiders doing the right thing in the draft and getting a talented quarterback. Because what winds up happening is a talented quarterback erases and removes obstacles from a team. So when the defense is struggling, you need that guy that you can depend on and go out there. Defense gives up two touchdowns. That give you a chance and keep you in the game. Score some points, man. This what you need. And, and I think they need to do everything they do to, 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 to get that going, right? Now, guys, I'm sitting up here and I'm looking at some of these free agents, man. And Adore Jackson Jr. and the Raiders have had um, some, some, some connection here. This is something that we spoke about last week, man. Now, Adore Jackson Jr. is a guy that has that California connection with, with Antonio Pierce. He's never really been the most healthy guy in the world, but he is a talented, talented young corner, bro. Now, if you believe that Jack Jones is a number one corner and you can develop Jacorian Bennett, which we kind of didn't get a chance to develop Jacorian Bennett. I believe bringing in Marcus Peters really hurt Jacorian Bennett last year. I, I I do. I'm not totally out on Jacorian Bennett. Like we know we gotta add some more players to the roster, but I want to see the Raiders go out there and get a cornerback in the draft, somewhere in the draft. And I would like to see the Raiders go and bring in a free agent like an Adoree Jackson Jr., a guy who has starting experience, who's very physically talented. You know, the guy has not really, really, really lit the world on fire. You know, when we talk about Adore Jackson Jr. returning kicks, that's something that is a thing of the past. He doesn't really return a lot of kicks. But the thing is, he's a guy that you can hope to kind of spark the Raiders secondary with, with some of his play, man. Now, this is a guy who's gotten paid already, right? He's gotten paid for the New York Giants. He's a credible number two cornerback, man. He's a credible number two, man. And, you know, with the Raiders, man, you know, playing a lot of zone, a lot of man-to-man, -man, you know what I'm saying? The Raiders need guys that are physically talented. You need guys that can keep up with these fast guys in the AFC West and all up and down the AFC, man. And I think Adore Jackson Jr. is a guy who could upgrade our defense. I want to see that happen pre-draft. I really do. I want to see that happen pre-draft, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat. My guy. Oh, I read this one already. My, my bad, yo. My guy Redbone, don't be surprised if AOC is starting and beating out Minshew. Pause. He hears the noise. He knows what's at stake. It's his job to lose, and he knows that. He's been in the building daily, and he'll be better. Listen, if it's Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew, I'd be disappointed if Aiden O'Connell was to beat. I'm, I'm, I'm completely expecting Aiden O'Connell to beat out Gardner Minshew. Just by virtue of the fact that he's a guy that the Raiders drafted. He's younger than Gardner Minshew. You know what you have with Gardner Minshew, and you know that Gardner Minshew is used to being a backup quarterback. He's used to being the guy coming in and saving the day. He's used to helping mentor quarterbacks. This is what he's done. Gardner Minshew, you've never gotten a Gardner Minshew, really, that's super successful, that was just a starter from pillar to post. Gardner Minshew is the, the – he is becoming the new Nick Foles. And I, and, and I like having that, that, that security behind whatever quarterback we got starting next year. Colts House, long time no see. You got my QB. Thank you, Colts House, for pulling up in the place, man. Yeah, we got your QB, bro. But y'all, hey, man, y'all, y'all got a stud. Y'all got a stud at quarterback, man. Y'all be fine, man. My God, Dan High Stake Teaser is in a place, man. Keith England, what it is, Keith? Man, how you been, brother? 
Coach AP is not going to trade his next three years draft picks to move up and take a chance like that. Say Jaden Daniels doesn't have it, then AP is screwed. See, this is the problem, bro. I think AP will, bro. I think he believes in Jaden so much. And this is the reason why I'm very, very happy that you have a Tom Telesco in the building. I'm very, very happy that you have a Champ Kelly in the building. Because emotion is the enemy of reason a lot of the times. The emotions of getting a guy that you're close with, you have a personal relationship with, might give you a blind spot to some of the things that might go wrong. That might give you a blind spot. I'm, I'm Listen, I have 100% faith that the consortium of people in the building will make the right decision, man. Seriously, man. Todd, Nick Foles won a ring with a team that was loaded, right? Loaded. Loaded. But Nick Foles has never been the kind of starter that can... Nick Foles came in at the right time. You look at how many games... Carson Wentz won that season. Carson Wentz won a lot of games that season. I think he won like 12 games for them, bro. I forget. But I don't think that their Eagles would have been that successful had Nick Foles started from week one. I doubt it. So if Gardner Minshew could play that role and we wouldn't, you know, that'd be great. But I'm not, it's not like Nick Foles, they they put Nick Foles in and he went from pillar to post and took him to a championship. That's not what happened. He came in at the right time. He got hot, played well, got them through the Super Bowl and they won. Daniel Caps Keenan, my guy. Oh, read the wrong one, man. So we load this team. Do not trade away early picks. We aren't there yet. Now, Todd, this is what I'm saying, bro. This is what I'm saying. No matter what happens, right, just make sure that what you do is impactful. I don't want to see us mortgage the farm. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry, man. Solomon Mitchell. Gardner Minshew is the new Nick Foles. That's 100. Keeping the effing real, dog. Tell Nick, get off my effing lawn. Let's hope so, man. I believe that the entire nation can agree on this, whether it's Penix, Knicks, Daniels, McCarthy, hell, Rattler, even Taglia Lower. We agree we need to draft a QB, man. I'm telling you, bro. Appreciate you. Colts house. Sorry to tell you, which is bad for Rush, your coach is a defensive-minded coach. He'll settle with QB. It's going to target a monster edge or a corner, in my opinion. It's got enough firepower at QB to wait. I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. And I'm going to be 100% real with you. The Raiders really can go out there in a draft and, and still stock the cupboards with defensive talent. You, We have so many guys on this roster that have yet to emerge who need a chance to develop. I think the Raiders really learned something with Antonio Pierce coming here. He allowed players a chance to develop. That's the difference between Antonio Pierce and Josh McDaniels, in my opinion. Josh McDaniels was so bent and hell-bent on his system, his guys, and guys that he can trust, that he sacrificed the development of young players. And when Antonio Pierce came in, he went out and got a young player in Jack Jones, who wasn't being used right in New England, wasn't happy, brought him here, brought his joy back, balled out, right? He allowed Aiden O'Connell to get off the bench instead of keep trotting Jimmy Garoppolo's water pistol throwing ass out there again. He went out there and he played there Mumford a lot more. A lot more. Look how well there Mumford played, bro. There, there's so many guys on this roster that Antonio Pierce played who were young. He played Malcolm Koontz and allowed him to develop. This is what I'm talking about. I, listen, I'm telling y'all, man, y'all got it. Y'all got to really look at what's going on, bro. You got to really, really look at what's going on. It's player development. I'm okay with that. NFT, I don't know enough to know which is the right QB, hoping they get who they want. Yo, and that's an honest assessment, bro. Yvette Niles, the flying wonderful. The Raiders must get a QB for the future. That's a fact. Yo, NJS too. NJS didn't really play that much, Christian, but he allowed him to get off the bench and ball for one game, right? Tyree Wilson developed. Tyree Wilson was nerfed in the beginning of the season. Guys, that's what it's all about. So there's a lot of people and there's a lot of holes on this roster that people feel that we need to fill that maybe the Raiders feel like the answers that they need to that question is in the building. 
Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that their Mumford is probably going to be a guard because in this zone blocking scheme, him going forward, being that big of a guy. Now, Thayer Mumford's very athletic, right? But he's more of a power tackle. I can see Thayer Mumford being a guard. I'm telling you. that's Yo, Rice, like I'm saying, yo, Byron Young didn't even play. That, that See, and that's a fact, bro. Chris Smith, all these guys. Letting these young guys develop. Hey, waste it. Who's the one guy if we draft that will make you break your TV? Bro, look, man. It, look, I, I couldn't tell you, bro. I couldn't tell you because I kind of got more faith in the people making the decision now than last year. And I went ape shit on Tyree Wilson. And Tyree Wilson t is turning out to be the right choice. And I was wrong about that. So I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to chill, man. Oh, that's another name I forgot, Rich. Palmao. Palmao's a guy that, that, that got some burn under AP and played great, man. Mm-mm-mm. Now, see, this is the thing, guys. Jordan Travis. Now, Jordan Travis is a guy that – Jordan Travis is very, very athletic, bro. And I, and I like Jordan Travis. It's just that this is the difference. And I had this had this conversation on the last Grab and Wasted show. Jordan Travis just broke his leg November the, like November the 17th or the 18th. The way he broke his leg – it, it wasn't like you didn't know. You could see it, man. It looked like some Joe Theismann shit. I don't know how long it's going to take Jordan Travis to be able to compete. I don't know. I don't know. The way his leg broke, I, I can't see him playing right now. I can't, I can't see him playing right now. If you take Jordan Travis in like round four, I'm fine with that. But then that's if... That's even if you take another guy before him and you can kind of have the RG3, Kirk Cousins kind of situation going on. Now, listen, right here, MG, this would be the ideal situation right here. I would like to see Mumford at right guard and Dalton Wagner at right. That would be the ideal situation. I don't know how athletic Dalton Wagner is. Now, in the power concept, he's a big dude. He's like 6'9". He's a big guy, right? I don't know if Dalton Wagner, you know, and especially if you draft the lefty quarterback, man, with, with a Penix, I don't know if Dalton Wagner putting a rookie there is going to be, even if you don't, have. I, I don't want to see a rookie getting harassed all day having to protect our quarterback, whomever that may be. James Stewart, wasted your thoughts on J.J. McCarthy. I think J.J. McCarthy is all around the most physically talented quarterback in this draft as far as height, weight, speed, arm talent, that kind of stuff. The most physically – let me let me rephrase that. The most physically talented guy in the draft is Caleb Williams. But when you talk about prototypical, like, height, weight, arm, all that stuff, if, if, if you look at J.J. McCarthy in a park and you're picking quarterbacks, you probably take J.J. McCarthy. Like J.J. McCarthy, he's a strong arm. Um, he has good feet. He can move. He's a big kid. He's strong ass arm. Love that about him. The problem with JJ McCarthy is, is that we don't have enough of a sample size of him dropping back and throwing the football. JJ McCarthy was kind of nerfed a bit because Jim Harbaugh's offense is a is an offense where it is it is a run first offense. Jim Harbaugh is a is a is a freaking you know he's he, he's a Bo Schembechler guy. He's an old school pro star offense guy. I formation. You know, run the football down your throat, three yards in a cloud of dust, two tight ends, fullbacks, stuff like that. And people say, yo, he's a game manager, right? But most quarterbacks are supposedly game managers. But but just because you never saw J.J. McCarthy cut it loose and drop back 35 times and throw the ball doesn't mean he can't. The guy only lost. He, he didn't lose many games in college. He didn't lose. And that doesn't really mean a whole lot when you're in, on a powerhouse program. But I think J.J. McCarthy, if he's developed right, bro, I think J.J. McCarthy could be a beast. I like him, man. I like him. It would be easier to go QB at 13, move back into the first round or the early second than it would be to do reverse. Penix being on the board 
makes a trade up more expensive. That's a fact, bro, because they know you're going for a quarterback. So just, yo, dollar cost average, yo. Dollar cost average. Whomever they, even if it's J.J. McCarthy, take them. Dollar cost, if, if a quarterback that you can pallet being your starter falls into your lap, you take them. Because it's, yo, it's need, but then it is positional need. What is the most important thing? It's the quarterback. Never, ever forget that. Look, I don't have a, I think J.J. McCarthy is a blank slate that can, I think he has the highest ceiling of almost anyone in the draft. So if you're a guy who has the the, the faith that you can develop him, I think, yo, J.J. McCarthy, I wouldn't have a problem with drafting. I like J.J. McCarthy. I really do. And I'm not just saying that but there's a lot of good quarterbacks in his draft. The thing about drafting a quarterback in the National Football League, and the most important thing about that is them going to the right situation, man, having the right coach to develop and having weapons. Like if you send somebody to a place where the covers is bare, you are not as optimistic drafting a guy who is limited, right? But when you draft a guy into a place like the Raiders where they got a great defense, you've already got running backs, you've got a Hall of Famer at wide receiver, you have a pro bowler on the other side, you have a Tucker, you know what I'm saying? You you know, you know have a Michael Mayer that's a guy that's looking to be a, a, a top five guy in his position. It, you, it, it doesn't feel the same draft in a, a, a guy that's that kind of a project. It doesn't feel the same because you know that he has the weapons around him to be successful unless he's a complete fucking scrub. Wasted. Parham, the right guard, and Mumford, the leg guard. Said, no, no, because Parham has played next to Colton Miller and Andre James and they've protected him. I think that Thayer Mumford is a guy who has that kind of skill set where he can move up and down the line as you see fit. He could play left tackle, he could play right tackle, he could play right guard. I wouldn't upset the um the apple cart when it comes to Dylan Parham. Dylan Parham is a guy that I will leave where he's at so I know what I have in Dylan Parham. I think moving Dylan Parham around is going to cause you confusion as far as his evaluation process going into the next season. You know, you want to know what you have in Dylan Parham. You want to know if he was a draft pick that's on a plus side or if he's a guy that's in the negative column and he's a guy that needs to be upgraded and or replaced. This is the year that Dylan Parham proves exactly what he is. This is the year. And yeah, Mumford did play left guard. I'll say he played left tackle, he played right tackle. But the thing is, is that Mumford is a guy that has shown that rare skill set in the NFL where he could play anywhere in the offensive line besides center. There are not guys like that. You know, the 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 Denzel Goods of the world, the Khalif Barnes of the world, those guys are rare. Those guys are valuable. Those guys are very, very valuable. Shout out to Denzel Good. Guys that can play anywhere in the line, you don't see that a lot. There's some guys that can only play one position. Guys, let me ask you guys a question, man. Wait a second. What round do you see James Williams getting drafted in? I really like the kid. He's a baller. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I don't know. It depends on how the board falls, bro. You, I could I, closer to the draft. I'd probably be able to tell you, man. Closer to the draft, I'd probably be able to tell you. Now, guys, let me let me tell y'all something. Now, when you talk about quarterbacks, right, the Giants are in a situation, and I've heard rumors that the Giants are thinking about moving on from Daniel Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones is available, would he be someone that you would consider bringing to the Raiders? I just want to ask you guys, is that somebody that you guys would consider bringing to the Raiders? I'm asking you. Daniel Jones, New York Giants. Is that is that somebody that you would consider bringing here? Especially if the if the contract isn't crazy. Now Daniel Jones is a guy that has shown flashes. Very athletically talented. Very athletically talented, right? 
He's 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 more physically talented than anybody we have on our roster. Is he a guy that you would consider? Damn, I'm getting I am getting nose out the wazoo. Nose out the wazoo. Now now <laughs> that shit ain't leather. That's crazy. They are killing Daniel Jones. He said, I'd rather have AOC to Joe's. Okay. Wasted. What it do with Fluker? Starter, backup, practice squad. I, bro, I couldn't tell you. I haven't seen DJ Fluker play in a couple of years, bro. It's a reason he's been out. Like, DJ Fluker looks phenomenal. He looks the part. If DJ Fluker is who he used to be, then he's probably a starter, right? If he was who he was before he started having injuries. and you know, we, But he's not that guy. Right. So I don't know if Fluker makes the roster, bro. I really don't. I don't know if Fluker makes the roster, bro. If they, if they draft well. Wasted trying to stir up a horn. Stop your lies, Cowtown Luna. I am not trying to stir up a horn. I can't believe you would accuse me of such filth. God. Wow. Damn it, Cowtown. The, the, a brother can't ask a question anymore, bro. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Shout out to Cowtown, bro. <laughs> Shout out to my guy Cowtown, bro. <laughs> Going to be interested this year with Wilson and Coons. Will Wilson ultimately be inside? Will Coons get extended, or is Wilson going to take the next step and end up letting Coons walk in 2024? Now, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think Tyree Wilson is going to be that Swiss Army knife rusher. I think he's that guy that you're going to move in and out just based off of his size. And I think that if you see the season going in a situation where, you know, first few games of the season, Malcolm Koontz is healthy. Malcolm Koontz gets you three, four sacks, first four games of the season. It'd be better for you to give him the money than to let him walk. And I think that there's a way that you can leverage both of those guys on this roster and keep them both on this roster. Kuntz is a guy that you drafted. Same as Tyree Wilson. He is a he is a plus asset. I would try to get the Kuntz thing done early in the season so you can kind of uh, leverage your cost on him. I really would, man. That's not even, you know, Tyree Wilson, just from his size, man, you look, if you can have plays, which they will this season, but you can have a guy that's as powerful as Tyree Wilson in the middle of your defense with a Wilkins, bro, with a Crosby, with Kuntz on the other side, bro, do you know what that means? What that means is effectively, right? You have the, the 2010 New York Giants. Was that not 2010? Is that 2007, right? Where you can rush for and drop seven. You could rush for and drop seven. You make your secondary look a lot better than they actually are. You make your secondary look a lot better than they actually are. Look, man, I'm all for that. I'm all for that, man. I'm all for that. Sean, listen, how about how about we all paint ourselves purple and dance around in a circle, Sean? How about how about what I do is I come up with this new this 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 new way for the Raiders to trade for anybody that they want. Let's just how how yo, how about we, <laughs> Sure. How about we just fly to the moon right now? Get the F out of here with that. Two first for Josh Allen. Get that. Come on, man. Come on, Sean. You better than that, dog. You've been in here a long time, man. But I got to do it to you, brother. Angry man. What you doing here? Man, set your ass down. <laughs> sit your ass down, Sean. The F is wrong with you.
Come on, bro. Watts, right? Watts is in a place. Yo, shout out to to the the the, the YouTube legend, Watts Raider. This I think this might be the first time he's pulled up on me, bro. Appreciate you, Watts. Why would you let Coons walk if Tyree ain't a, a true de? Just yet, he's on a rookie deal, and that's a fact, bro. That is a a, a, a stone cold lead pipe fact. There's there's no way in hell that. I would let a talented pass rusher out of out of the building, bro. Pass rushers are as valuable. I, I think when you talk about assets, right? Quarterbacks number one. But right after that, it's left tackle and pass rusher, bro. I'm not letting a young pass rusher out of the building if I don't have to. Ever. I'm sorry, bro. You can never have enough. You can never, ever, ever have enough. Ever, especially when you're trying to beat Patrick Mahomes, you need to be able to go up and bust him in his mouth. You need to slam him on his face like the Muppet face jabroni he is. That is what you need to be putting into the air. You need to have the dogs to hunt Patrick freaking Mahomes. You got to look them in the face every time you played them. Every time. And you got to be able to say, you better eat your Wheaties, brother, because we are going to beat that ass every time. And if you look at the last generation of greats, when you look at the great Tom Brady, F Tom Brady, but he's great. You can't, the great Peyton Manning. If you look at the teams who beat them, it's the Ravens and the Steelers. And you know why? Because the Ravens and the Steelers are built to go out there and beat your ass. James Harrison and all of them, Troy Palomalo and them, they were going in there and they were going to hunt Brady and they were going to hunt Peyton Manning. And that's how you got to beat them. Because chances are you're not going to draft anybody who's ever going to be as good as Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is so good that he is the best player to ever play for the Kansas City Chiefs already, ever. And Derek Thomas played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Bobby Bell played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Marcus Allen is a Raider, so they can't have him. That's our guy. But Joe Montana, now Joe Montana was at the end of his career, so we ain't going to count that. But golly, so that's the thing. The way you even the scales is beating his ass. Beating his effing ass. That's right. Frank High Stakes Rivera. Extend Koontz, build the defense, mono with a deep front, and later on Koontz, becomes an asset later if you need to trade. Thank you, Moneyball GM and at his finest. Love seeing Kermit and Travis Swifty pissed off. I did too. You know what I want to see? I want to see Derwin Jackson kind of shit from, from our safeties. You know, I, I hope we do get James Williams, bro. Because he's a big Cam Chancellor kind of dude, man. I would love to have him in the building, bro. What round? I, I'm, I'm thinking, man. I see him going like the third round. He's very athletically talented. I see him going in the third round, bro. My guy Martin, what it is, man? I'm back. Just been out trying to photograph a comet. Did any? Did we? Did we sign anyone? No, not on a Sunday, my brother. My guy, Watts Raider. You could never have enough D line or O line. You can't, bro. That's the difference between living and dying in the National Football League. How you're built from the inside out. You can compete almost yearly if you're built properly. If you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, great coach, great staff, great interior, talent all over the field. So you, there have been years where the Pittsburgh Steelers have made the playoffs with Mason Rudolph playing quarterback. This is how you sustain greatness. The flying wonderful leads the devil. We better keep Coons to prioritize him before the fifth year, whatever. Wilson becomes decided. Then that's a fact. That is a fact. My guy Top Beats is in here dropping science, man.
Israel Young said, "Watch ready. You need to. Yeah, that's right, man. Y'all need to. Y'all need to get that going, man." Sean said, "He goes. I'm saying it. We don't get this QB shit right. We ain't going nowhere. You see what DC gives us, and now is nothing. You gotta be elite, now, bro. The problem is, and this is the cool thing about this. Say, for instance, we don't get a quarterback, right? And we rock out with AOC. AOC don't make shit." Gardner Minshew. Now, some people will say that we overpaid for Gardner Minshew. I, I, I think we could have done better on that deal, if I'm being honest. But we didn't overpay for him. It's, he's not, you know, and it's crazy because they were talking about like the top 10 highest paid players on our roster. You know, uh, Christian Wilkins is second at his position behind Chris Jones. You know, uh, Max Crosby is like ninth at his position. Uh, Devontae Adams is second in his position. But when you talk about guys like, you know, um, Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew is like 18th, he's the 18th highest paid quarterback in the league, which is crazy. Right? But but guys, it's about not having a quarterback that is eating up 35% of your cap. That is what this is all about. So you can build a powerhouse team without having a quarterback who is getting paid like a superstar and is not producing like a superstar. Until we get that superstar, I'm not willing to pay anybody that kind of crazy money, man. Yeah, we got 900 in the room. Yo, get wasted with your brother. Wasted. I got Mr. Silver. Appreciate you, my brother, for the nine with a $10 holler, man. Appreciate you, my guy. My guy, Hug D's, is in a place. Salute, my brother. Free AJ has been kind of quiet after the first week. What's Kalesko cooking on? Any word on rise and fall in QBs? I just want to win, period. Bro, I, I've the only thing that I've heard coming out of the Raiders is that the Raiders have had meetings with Adoree Jackson Jr. And to me, that's promising to me. And the longer free agency goes, a guy like Adoree Jackson Jr. is still a question mark. He's not a guy that you know fulfills a specific need because you don't know how much Adoree Jackson Jr. you're going to get if you bring him in. You don't know how long he's going to play. You don't know how how, how well he's going to play. But if I look at Adoree Jackson Jr. and I look at the best years he's had, right? He's had him with the Giants and he had him with Patrick Graham. He's a Patrick Graham guy. He understands his defense. He'd be a great addition to his defense, in my opinion. And the longer he's out there floating around, the, the longer he's being seen by the other teams, the lower the price goes. Because he's out there twisting in the wind. He's going to want to play. And I'm telling you right now, man, the Raiders are playing this smart. They're not jumping out the window and saying, we need a corner, we need a corner. No, they're like, hey, look, man, we got Nate Hobbs. We got Jack Jones. We got a young stud kid in Ja'Korian Bennett who we stunted his growth last year by bringing in Marcus Peters. Could, could we use a Dory Jackson Jr.? Absolutely. But are we going to overpay for a Dory Jackson Jr.? Hell no. And, I, and, I, and I'm glad the approach they're taking. Because there was a lot of times where people would say that we overpay for free agents because we were too overzealous, man. Man, my dog, you're wasted. If we don't move up in the draft for a QB, which do you think we draft? QB on cornerback, offensive tackle. I think we need both, but I'm leaning a lot on OT. Bro, it depends on what the board looks like. I don't think that the Raiders, if they're not drafting a quarterback, I think that their mindset at that point is best player available. So if Ter Terry on Arnold is on the board, Right. And some of the more elite tackles are gone. Then it's like you would take Terry on Arnold. Right. But if you have J.C. Latham and Terry on Arnold both on the board, it all depends on how the Raiders view said prospect right now. For me. Think just by virtue of how many offensive linemen in this draft are viable pro prospects, I would take the corner. I would take the corner because there are only a couple of elite corners in this draft. You know what I'm saying? Is the Quinion Mitchells of the world, the Wiggins of the world, the Arnolds of the world, um, the Cooper Dijons of the world. There are only a couple of elite prospects. So the pool of corner dramatically drops if you have a chance to get one early and that's how it's slotted and that's how you're deciding to go about your business. You got to take the corner. Shout out to everybody on this Palm Sunday, man. Ty Davis. Is Minshew a top 20 QB? No. No, I don't think so. I mean, 
Let's run it down. You you want to run it down? Let's run it down, bro. So, Mahomes number one, right? It's one, two, Joe Burrow, and or Josh Allen, right? So we're gonna name those three guys, right? Lamar Jackson. Uh, I'm just going Lamar Jackson. You know, Aaron Rodgers isn't fifth anymore, but Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. The ministry was not better than Aaron Rodgers, right? Um, I'm trying to think. Matthew Stafford is better than Minshew. Uh, J- Jared Goff is better than Gardner Minshew. Um, C.J. Stroud is better than Gardner Minshew. Um, I mean, Deshaun Watson at this point, you would say Deshaun Watson, what he was, just based off of what he was, is better. Justin Herbert is definitely better. That's 10 guys right there. Uh, Dak Prescott is better. That's 11 guys right there. Um, the, I'm just thinking all the teams in the league. Did, did, did I mention Stafford yet? Stafford, 12, is better than him. Um, Brock Purdy is better than him, 13. You know, can, you can't sleep on Brock. Brock's been in the Super Bowl, right? A uh, two attack via low is better than Gardner Minshew. Uh, pff, shit. Trying to go down in the the, uh, the south. I mean, pff, maybe. I mean, let's think, man. Jordan Love is better than him. Jordan Love is definitely better than him. Uh, Russell Wilson is better than uh, Gardner Minshew. I would say. I know some of y'all would disagree, but I think Russell Wilson is better than him. So, I mean, bro, we can keep this going because I'm trying to think of every team in the league and all the divisions and stuff. Uh, Is Gardner Minshew better than Derek Carr? I don't know. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is better than Gardner Minshew. I mean, so, no, I don't think he's a top 20 guy, man. Shout out to the living legend, man. Appreciate you for being a new subscriber, man. Wait, hold on. We we getting behind. We get almost at an hour and a half, y'all. Top 30, yes. Graf is still in a place to be. Shout out to Graf, man. Yo, Jalen Hurts is better than him. I mean, God, no. Baker's better than him. Yeah, that's right. That, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take cars better than Minshew. <laughs> Yo, Anthony Richardson's better than Minshew. Kirk Cousins is better than Minshew. I mean, go, I mean, golly. L- l- no. No, he's not 20. <laughs> Shout out to my dog, Graf, in the place, man. Top 30, yes. Yes, 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 yo. But Minshew is a better option than what we had last year. Now, this is the thing about Gardner Minshew, and this is the thing that I'm praying. I'm comfortable with Gardner Minshew being on the roster. I'm comfortable with being a guy that can push a young quarterback. But me, with my Raider brain, I'm not as comfortable if he's the, def- if he's the best guy on the roster. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that because that means that we have one of the worst quarterbacks in the league starting. That's what that effectively means, right? So that means that this defense has to not only come o- overcome Justin Herbert, has to only come over, has to overcome Patrick Mahomes. Those are four games this year, four games, right? So you're asking your defense to go out there and lead the way every single time. Now. What I need is I need a quarterback who has the talent to elevate this roster sometimes. Sometimes. I need a quarterback that can go out there with his skill set, and even if the defense isn't at their best, play congruent to the level of the guy across the field or a little bit better. And if we don't have that, we need to seek that every single year. You can't be comfortable with Gardner Minshew being your starter. He is definitely a backup. He's a backup. And, and, And the thing is, Aiden O'Connell doesn't beat Gardner Minshew out, then that means that he's a fourth round pick and he's a backup forever. That's what that means. That that means that if, if, if he in his second year being in this, this is what I'm saying is him being a guy who has weapons. So there's no excuses, has protection. So there's no excuses, knows the playbook, right? Has been, you know, he's, he's here first. He's in the building first, right? Has the support of the organization because the organization drafted him. This he'll he'll there's no better time in Aiden O'Connell's career that he'll have to prove that he's a starter than now. So if he doesn't win this job, 
you already know you can close the book on Aiden O'Connell as far as him being a guy who could propel this roster into the future. Daniel Jones might be better than Carr and Minshew, to be honest. Done more in the league than both of them. T. Severe, I think that Daniel Jones is more athletically talented than both of those guys, right? I don't know if he's done more in the league than D.C. I, I, look, I'm not a Derek Carr guy. I, I respect D.C. I respect what he's done for this organization. I think that he's taken a step back, honestly, over the last nine or ten years. I think Derek Carr in 2016 was a guy that I was – huge fan of right but i just think that the injuries and some of the, the I, I think he 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 sees ghosts where there aren't at times but for me to say that daniel jones has done more than Derek carr i can't say that i can't say that has he is is he more of an athlete a specimen yeah does he have higher ceiling than Derek carr at this point yeah but i can't say he's totally better than him but i like daniel jones i really do do i want the raiders to pay a shitload of money for him no if he gets cut and you can get him on the cheap and bring him in, why not? I like Daniel Jones when he's coming out of Duke. I remember at the Senior Bowl when he was cooking under John Gruden. I, I liked him, man. Trade the 13th pick for Carl. Let's bring the GOAT back. <laughs> Yo, grab you. Grab, get the F out of here with that. What the F is... Angry man, what you doing here? Man, set your ass down. Come on, stop with that. The F graphic. <laughs> oh, my dog, man. Dude is having a, a, a fucking time in here, yo. <laughs> Reese Rock being in the place, man. Being the worst and saying we got better is in any form of enlightenment. No way to go up, but we inch up. Not leap like Pittsburgh. Compared to Mason and Kenny to Russ and Fields. I, yo, I feel that, man. They said Drab Kevin Crack. Yo, shout out. Yo, shout out to Grab, yo. What is waste to come for? I remember Hondo refusing to call you anything but unwasted talent. It's a long story, bro. Long story. <laughs> All the QBs are learning a new playbook. So everyone is at the starting line. Yeah, that, that's that's a fact. But I, I think and this is the difference, Watts. Aiden has it first. Like Aiden, you know, Getsy was brought in and Aiden was already on the roster before they even signed Gardner Minshew. So Aiden's been, as soon as Getsy walked in the building, Aiden's been, he, he has a head start. He has a head start. And I think he has the support of the organization in, in, in a different way. I don't think that the organization brought Gardner Minshew in here to totally just like it's not like signing Gardner Minshew they were like yo this is our guy like like when you go and go get Deshaun Watson or you go out there and go get Aaron Rodgers right they signed him to be an ancillary piece that could possibly start with Aiden O'Connell he's a guy who started last year he was your incumbent starter he has more of a connection with the guys already and everything at this point so I think he has the leg up and I think that this is the best chance he's ever had or ever is going to have to carve his route to being a starter, like real rap. Because this is a young, he's a younger player. So the organization always values the younger, cheaper player. Can I develop that younger, cheaper asset, right? I, you got a guy that's got a two-year deal. Aiden O'Connell has more time, right? He's a he's a rookie guy who hasn't really been paid yet. He hasn't even broached the, the numbers that Gardner Minshew have. So I think that the organization, if, if I'm being honest, if all things being equal, if they play to a stalemate, they will start Aiden O'Connell over Gardner Minshew. And I think that's why he has an advantage, bro. C Gabe go. Mid or late round linebacker, you have your eye on. I mean, y'all already know. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is 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 a guy that I, I think because I think the linebackers have become the new running backs of the defense. I don't think a linebacker will go off the board before the late second. Late second, I think as a linebacker with this year's draft, you being drafted in the late second round is almost like being drafted in the first round. I'm telling you right now, man. My guy asks, wasted. I much rather have an elite defense with an above average offense over the opposite. At a minimum, we have a better chance in any game. That's a fact, bro. 
cut the head off, cut the head off in the body of fall, bro. My guy graphic rated. This is a what have you done lately business and cars coming off historic season in you know. He finally got past the 50 in New Orleans. <laughs> the damn, he's a damn fool, bro. Oh my God. Damn, yo, grab this nasty work, bro. <laughs> Bugger, yo. Yo, that's a fact, Watts. Yeah, they like Aiden. And I think he has the, like you said previously, too. He, so I think it's his job, bro. And I think that at this point, you know, I'm not going to beat this to death. We've been going an hour and a half, but I think that Aiden O'Connell has the leg up. And if he don't win the job, that says a lot to me. That says a lot to me. That means that he hasn't taken the strides that we think he should take, and we need to totally move on. La Yo, we're going to get the last couple of comments. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. <laughs> My brother grabbed facts and the facts, man. <laughs> <laughs> facts are the facts yo who works better under the luke getsy system i think they both i think both of their skill sets are, are are um aligned for the luke getsy says these are two guys that are accurate guys you know what i mean i i think that Gardner Minshew is a little more mobile so maybe you might give him the leg up from there but you know i Aiden O'Connell works well in Luke Getzey's system. I think he'll be better in Getzey's system than Justin Fields was. I mean, if you look at Tyler Badgett last year, this is a guy who should have never even been drafted. He beat us in that system, man. T. Severe. AOC is a statue of a QB who had a top-tier weapon at number one and two and only completed 62% of his passes. Unacceptable. Daniel Jones is only a year older than O'Connell, by, than, than by the way. That's a fact, bro. Yeah, man. Will Ramsey be a Raider? Not this year. Not this year, man. <laughs> I remember Raider fans saying DC would win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I know, bro. That's never going to happen. Yeah, and yo, thank you, bro. Axe. Yeah, man. Yes, yes, man. Uh, You know what's funny, man? Uh, My wife and I, over the past weekend, we renewed our vows. So shout out to my wife, man. Appreciate all of y'all, man. Look, I'm going to get on out of here, man. Go hang out with the fam, you know? Y'all have a, a terrific, terrific day. Everybody else out there, you know, I know we kind of, you know, lean to the quarterback thing, but that's really what the nation wants to talk about. Whatever y'all want to talk about, y'all kind of took this live over, and I, I have no problem with that, man. Y'all, thank you for pulling up. Everybody who's not subscribed, who's out there on Twitter watching me or, you know, this your first time watching, please hit that subscribe button, man. We we are trying to get to a place where um, Red Nation Unlimited is, is going to keep growing, man. You know, Wasted Talent podcast going to keep growing, man. Uh, shout out to everybody that's out there, man. Thank y'all. And uh, we're going to be back all week, man. I told y'all we're going to do a mock draft tomorrow. And then what I'm going to do is we are going to break down every player that's taken in that mock. And we're going to continue to cover the players in the draft to give you guys a little more knowledge on some of the players so that, you know, you can watch the draft a little differently this year. You can. Look at some of these players, man, that you might not have ever heard of and have a background on them. So that means that, yo, the draft is going to be three days of much see television for y'all, man. Shout outs to y'all. Shout out to the whole chat, man. Thank y'all, man. Y'all, y'all, yo, appreciate everybody, man. Make sure you guys hit that sub button. We are out of here, man. Thank y'all, man. And Top Beats said it best, man. Thank you to everybody for their support in the chats, man. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for, for pulling up, man. And yo, check this out, y'all. Y'all already know. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yes, sir. It's going up. The Redskins are in play at two. Do I think we're going to move up? No. But if you want to get up there, the price is going up. Y'all have a terrific, terrific day, man. Y'all go have some fun, man. Have a good day. <laughs>